Um, before we really get in the thick of things, I really want to make sure that we are giving a shout out to our sponsor, ExpressVPN. Working from home? Protect your sensitive data with an extra layer of security at expressvpn.com slash RTTV. And uh, we're live, which means on RTTV, you can join us in chat right now. Be a first member today. And uh, you can sign up for a first membership. You can join the worldwide community right now with a uh, free trial for first. Uh, you can watch all the stuff that you've been really excited about, binge everything. There's so many things that we're going to talk about today because we have some very special people. We always have very spe special people on I Have Notes now that I think about it. <gasps> <laughs> so join us in chat, be a first member today, and then you can watch all the cool stuff that we're going to talk about later today. And now we hear this is I Have Notes. Uh, the show where people with surprisingly long IMDb uh, lists credits uh, come together to talk animation, all things creative, and which days of the week are appropriate to name your kids. I am <laughs> your host for this episode, Issa Vadiola, and with me, my wonderful co-host is... My name is Carrie Shawcross. Hello, and I think there's only two days of the week that work. Um, <laughs> but uh, we'll hear from our other guests about this exact same topic. We've got... Aaron Wynn. Hello. Hey. Hey. hey and yeah. we've got Noelle Wiggins. Hi. Ooh, yo, yo. What is up? What is up? New friend. New, new friend. friend. New friend. Who this? New friend. Who this? <laughs> it's well, re it's recurring, recurring friend, new guest. That's it. Um, I mean, it's, you know. That's a, we... that's a really good um, lower third to name yourself. <laughs> recurring <Yeah>. friend. <laughs> By yeah. the way, can I say that, that beat at the top? Oh, I'm right? loving that beat. It's, it's hard in the paint. Hard in the paint. I, lo hey. I love that beat. I was jamming to that beat that whole time. It, it's like that a... Richie Branson. It's that Richie ooh, Branson ooh. love. Get it, Issa. Get it, Issa. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, 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 I like it. Thanks, Noel. <laughs> so, hey, guys, I miss you. <laughs> I know, seriously. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been a while. It's been it's been a little bit since we you know got everybody together and we got Noel in here for the first time. Thanks I, for having wanna, me. Super excited, super excited no, to be here. Noel, do you want to talk about a little bit about uh, what you do with uh, our Who team? Who are you? Uh, I I am uh, Noel Sarate Wiggins. That is my full name, so, and I am I am a producer on on Red vs. Blue Zero that <gasps> that comes out on Mondays. I don't know if I was supposed to say it now, but I just wanted to hype it up. Mondays, say 10 a.m. Whenever Red vs. Blue Zero. It's so good on the Roosterteeth.com website. And yes. uh, I'm also a writer, a uh, voice actor. I, I, get, I get the opportunity to play Raymond. It's so much fun. Please watch the show. We love it. I love it. I love you. You love me. I, I think I'm We're getting into some copyright family. territory. Well, like, are we about to do that? Are we about to do that? Okay. I mean, we just ah. did it. Except, yeah, I do remember that you may have, when I wasn't here on, when I was on break, you may have stopped by to talk about some cheese things. And I don't know. Oh, yeah. If how I feel about those things, but okay, we can, okay. I, got, I, got, I got a question for you. I I, I, okay. I got a question for you. It's a it's it's a it's a little okay. so. Would you eat oh ranch <sighs> by itself? I wouldn't. Would, would you eat personally gravy by itself? Personally, I wouldn't if, eat ranch with anything. But by itself is really the question because like my stance on on cheese is cheese is okay. It's it's all good in my book as long as it complements something else. But right. cheese by itself, that's problematic. Problematic. Immoral, mm -hmm. alphabetical. Uh, All right. I guess I'm a, a demon over here because I'll eat a block cheese with See, nothing else. And that's, yeah. the, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> and so in my head, I'm just thinking, would would anyone want to eat gravy by itself? Would you want to eat uh, I, feel like some, by I feel like some people would. Not me personally. Would you trust, yeah, sure would you trust that person? There. Would you trust that person uh, if, no, if you no. saw them eating gravy? That's how I kind of feel when I see people... Uh, eating blocks of cheese by itself, but Aaron, I love you. I think you're great. I trust right. you. I'll, I'll try not to eat so, blocks of cheese in front, is in your, front of me. Just in front Noel, of me. is your is your issue with it that so if you're just eating like a cube of cheese or something, is it is it like it's like it's raw the, cheese? It's the texture. It's the it's the it's the way it makes me feel inside. It's mm -hmm. the way that emotionally or emo or, or tummily. <laughs> yeah, are you like just intolerant? No, no, not. Mm. I don't think so. I'll have to okay. do further research, but only if I eat I like a full, like I large pizza know. by itself, then okay. things get a little dicey. But okay. other than that, I think I'm pretty good. It's really just the texture. It's the, it's the, it's like the, it just tastes awful sometimes. And, so, but you know, uh, you know. Someone in chat, uh, 
ZZZ Scott. It's, I'm assuming it's someone named Scott. So the chat goes, Noel brings the shit up every meeting. <laughs> I, I didn't bring it up. I, I think that I think up. that's Scott Morgan. No. I, don't, I brought it up one time, but but everyone <laughs> wants to talk about it because it's such a controversial uh, stance that I have. They just you know? want to argue with you at this. That's point. it. That, you know, and and I'm cool with that. You know, I'm a producer on Red versus Blue during the day, but then yeah. I moonlight as a contrarian sometimes. So you know, I'm yeah. all about that. I'm all about that. I'm all and, about um, that. and by the way, I know we said we we're going to talk about Ruby and RVB. Uh, Ruby is also out uh, premiering now every Saturday uh, at 10 a.m. But uh, th- buckle up. This is the next 45 minutes. Um, okay, <laughs> Noel. Oh wait, milk. Before... Yes, milk. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we have one more thing we've talked about. We do oh, have okay. one more thing. And um, then we'll get to the cheese. And then we'll get to the cheese because Extra Life is happening. <gasps> yeah. Um, put up that Whoa. thing, guys. If you're ready, donate to donate.roosterteeth.com. We are already starting. This is dope. Uh, Extra Life is happening now. Whoop, whoop. Um, whoop Chad. Joe. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I said Joe. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Chad, Jack, and um, Kate, Katie have been yeah. wonderful this year, and even throughout the entire uh, pandemic, they have uh, effortless, not effortlessly, uh, with effort. Yes. <laughs> tried with to effort and passion and care. And passion and Ooh. care and courage, which is the theme courage this year. Um, uh, have still, uh, we are still moving forward with extra life, regardless of what happens. Yeah, um, we're also, it's a big community week this week, and then yes. uh, this Saturday. Uh, from it's from ten to ten, it's twelve hours. Uh, doing a big, big stream uh, to so that's donate all week, donate all week, and then also come here and like this is where if you can, this is where you, this is where you open the wallet and you just yeah. like for the kids, for the kids, um, it's for the kids. For the kids. kids. None of us have kids, but I don't have kids. Uh, yeah, you can make your kids like do. Friday and Wednesday, but we. I, do, I think those are the only two days that everyone was comfortable with naming their kids. I feel like Monday is a good last name. Monday is I could see that. Yeah. yeah. So, well, this came up. Uh, I'm going to derail from cheese slightly, which I don't want to do. Um, <laughs> so you said the, uh, is his name Rupert, right? Yeah, Rupert Grant. Who plays uh, uh, Ron Weasley. Ronald Weasley. Ron Weasley. From Harry and Harry Potter. Potter he... Has had a spawn. <laughs> It's what it is. And her name is Wednesday. And so yeah, I love that name. Which I'm, is a I'm very pretty name. It. That's what we're talking about. And Friday, we're talking about works. It's, you know, it's it's not a super common name. Uh, recently, uh, you know, an Iron Man AI, which just makes the name very cool. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. No. <laughs> no. No. And then we started talking. Okay. Then we, then we talked about I so much like, shit yeah, in the last I, 20 yeah. minutes before this. <laughs> it was pretty much- All of that potential content. <laughs> what's, the yeah. wor- what's the worst day, though? Like, I, mm. I don't think anyone really likes Monday in general. Maybe some people do. No, I'm not Monday's a got Monday. a pretty negative it's connotation. Got a stigma. Yeah, it's got a stigma to it. cat once said, yeah. I hate Mondays. A case of the Mondays. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, so, here's yeah. the thing Friday, that's like. Oh, I'm done with my week. Oh, thank goodness, right? Yeah. So that's a positive. Wednesday, hump day, you're in the middle. It's like I can see I'm towards the end. Um, Monday. Yeah. So and then Tuesday and Thursday like pre-Monday, suck. Pre-Monday though. What was that? Sunday, Sunday is pre-Monday. I use yeah. Sundays to dwell and think about Mondays. So I just ruin right? my Sundays because that's what yeah, I that's same. how I use them. I so other than you guys with I have notes because this is whenever we record it. Tuesdays are not my favorite days of the week. <gasps> Why? Us, Why? No, as, no, because you guys are my bright spot. But We're the only thing that makes it The bearable. only thing <laughs> that makes, makes it bearable. Tuesdays, oh. I'm kind of just like, uh, t- Tuesday is the post-Monday. You know, you're like, okay, I got through Monday. And then Tuesday, it's like, oh, man, there's still the rest. It's of the not quite when Right? Tuesday, Tuesday is the hangover of Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Monday, has <laughs> Monday has potential. Monday has <laughs> potential. Monday has potential. Tuesday's the grim reminder that this is just another week. Wednesday, you're like, cool, I'm halfway there. Yeah. It Thursday, Thursday. You think yeah, about Fridays. Thursday. I think you just use Thursdays to think about Fridays and yes. then get excited for Friday. So that's yes. like the pregame situation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This has all been really. I love really this important. conversation right now. This is very good. Okay. Anyways, back to what we're talking about. Noel, do you drink milk? <laughs> I. Almond milk. Um, okay. I'm, I'm not a. Milk. I'm. I'm not Nothing a, from the team. See, we did the split three. So, like, should I? No, I need to look in this direction because it makes me look like I'm engaging with with, with uh, Carrie. Um, 
So I'm just looking because I'm trying to. Is this how I talk to people? I guess now. (laughs) I've forgotten how to talk to people. (laughs) So milk, I I do enjoy milk, but as of right now, currently in my life, I live in the almond milk world. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of the almond milk world. Am I still on camera? Okay. No, I I am. I am a. I am a fan of the almond milk. Apparently. It it does bad things for bees, and I also like bees. Oh shit, does it? Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Where did you get that Ooh. pipe from? You smoking some almond almond <laughs> almond herb? Oh, oh yeah, you know you know it. <laughs> it's, it's recreational. It's recreational. I think it's legal. I think so. Uh, you know, it's, we don't know what state you're in right now. <laughs> no one does. No one does. Yeah, I'm in Amsterdam, so that's, that's all. That's all. <laughs> so okay, so it's not dairy that's the problem. It's just cheese. Okay, it's okay. cheese. It's just cheese. But okay, I will say this. I will say this. Okay. I don't necessarily have the most sophisticated palate. Uh, I will admit to that. I will say. In my rank of cheeses, Velveeta's pretty damn high on there. So what? I know that's a lot. Like real exactly. <laughs> so well, now I'm starting to understand the problem. That's. <laughs> I'm looking at Issa. Say, I'm looking at... No- Noelle said, "Like I don't have a very sophisticated palate." I was like, oh, "Okay, so you basically grew up in the last like, or no, you basically Poor. lived your last <laughs> ten years on chicken nuggets, right?" And oh. Then... <laughs> okay. That's... Real talk, though. Real talk. Let's though. not besmirch the nuggies i i will say i will say this yeah like when it comes to like chicken nuggets and fries the more fake they are the more i cannot pronounce the ingredients oh oh, the better it tastes the better it tastes i don't know what's in riboflavin or red 13 i don't know what that is i just know it tastes yummy yummy i said red 13 which is because of final fantasy 7 I am tweeting right now. Let's not besmirch the nuggies. <laughs> let's not let's besmirch. Just, let's not besmirch the I, nuggies. I just okay? no. need that to be archived somewhere. Just so that's, that's the uh, thumbnail for the week. Yeah. No, Sam, I'm gonna get you like them. a. I was gonna say I'm gonna get you like a cheese. Many plate, have tried. But like... Many have tried. Many have failed. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you? I mean, but again. If there's extras on the cheese plate, if you got a little meat over here, you got a little cracker action over here, you got some uh, fruit and some wine. That's all I know. I'm yeah. all about it. That's it. That's it. But if it's like just straight cheese, I'm flipping that thing over. Just <laughs> out of my face. <laughs> It's okay. You do. You flip it to me. I'll eat all of your cheese. Yeah, seriously. I'll, flip it to you. I'll be your human cheese disposal <laughs> yeah. unit. I'll just, Aaron and I will be like at the edge of the table yeah. with our mouths open. Just like, <laughs> pour it in me. <laughs> What's your favorite cheese? What's your favorite cheese? Oh. Ooh. Gouda, 100. Gouda. Mm. Smoked Gouda, especially. Mm. Yum. Yum. Top um, tier. <gasps> we need to do a tier list of cheese. What? Oh! On, a, cheese. on a sandwich? <laughs> provolone. Or- Oh, okay, okay. Um, mm-hmm. And then if not, whatever ing- whatever cheese is used for queso. I don't... Oh. Mm-hmm. I will say this. Yeah. If I could pick a cheese that is my favorite... And you do I... have to right now. I, okay, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I pick Swiss. But really, okay. it's oh, not because of the taste. I'll be honest. It's not because of the taste. It's, it's because, because of the holes? It's because it's... of I grew up with Tom and Jerry, and oh. every cheese ah. that shows up in a cartoon is always Swiss. And so right. I'm all about... I'm all about the cartoon cheeses. I'll that makes sense. Cheese. Issa, I was with you. I was like, he just picked the cheese that has the least cheese in it. <laughs> <laughs> it has a built-in cheese deficit. That's it. That's it. <laughs> He's cheating the fucking system. What's he can say, oh, I had a slice. What's I had a slice. That, uh, was it 25% system? less? Yes. <laughs> What's the cheese that smells like a fart? What's that oh, one? Oh, it's blue is cheese. It, oh, yeah. Or, yeah. or what about, is it Limburger cheese? Is that what oh, it's called? Oh, yeah. That's one of those maybe real, stinky cheese. real that's nasty what boys. It is. Maybe, maybe it's, is it maybe, oh, oh, Issa's doing the hand. I, okay, yeah. I see what you're doing. Mm, okay. That's that's an emoji maybe, in the iPhone Maybe now. that's oh, yeah. the reason why. Maybe I was scarred by the fact that it just smells like poo gas. I don't know. Poo and gas. it does. It does. That's you're not it. wrong. You're not um, so. Oh, so did y'all see the best emoji that got added to iOS ever? That what I need is. Slack to get right now. It's a, it? a smiling, crying face. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? I do. Yeah, that. I always I it updated it. Um, so it's like Slack, a, you can that. upload. You can upload your custom emojis. That's true. I'll, oh, I'll yeah, grab it. Right. They did that. They added the like. I don't know what else to call this besides the like. Like I, I don't want to say anything offensive accidentally, but they added this. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know what they call it. Pinched fingers. <laughs> Oh, um, the new iOS, you can actually search for emojis now. Thank God. Yeah. <gasps> yes. Oh, yeah, you am, have I, to am, I the, am I the only person here who's like rocking a pixel? Am I the only person who's not? You are on the only person iOS? on this board right now. Uh, yeah. 
I it's had okay, no so one. I would it's so okay. we all text right now. I would be the green bubble. The green one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just see Carrie Shawcross laughed at your text. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like how do I how do I leave this chat? I don't. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to. Um, okay. Well, hey, we talked about um, uh, getting some questions. Yes. And there was, just, was one particular we got a bunch that everybody who, who tweeted this and thank you um oh, but yeah. one that maybe noelle you could talk a little bit that, that will uh inspire you and also command you to to talk a little bit about your rvb uh experiences um do we want to there's one from uh just a shadow 99 mm -hmm. um do, how do did I... he get involved with rvb zero the he being noelle Ooh, Ooh, okay uh... that's a that's a that's a great question Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. It all started when you I was You could start born. from the womb. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say that too. It was a dark and gloomy day. No, so with, with, uh, with, with red versus blue, how did I get involved? I, I usually try to restate the question. That's how I've been taught to do things. So how did I get involved in red versus blue zero? I got involved because of my very awesome, super amazingly talented friend named Torian Crawford, yeah. who is the vision behind Red vs. Blue Zero, out on Mondays, 10 a.m. on TheRoosterTeeth.com. <laughs> Please watch it. Tell a friend to tell a friend to watch it. Let's go. Um, but yeah, you know, me and Torian, we, we, go, we go back a, a, a little bit, right? And so, mm -hmm. right, right, right. And so, uh, I'll say this. Here's how it all kind of really started. One, Torian's an animator. And whenever I was getting into this do I want to be a filmmaker? Do I want to, what do I want to be in life? Mm -hmm. I started by learning to be an audio engineer, a sound designer. And the cool. thing is what I learned is that a lot of people take sound for granted a, oh, a lot yeah. of the time. And, and sound is very important. You can watch a silent film, but if you were to watch like a, a blockbuster and the, and the audio is trash, oh, it's taking you out of the, it's taking you out of the movie. It's 50% so, it's of the content. Exactly, exactly, super important. So. I, I kind of, uh, you know, like got my way into the industry, so to speak, it, uh, by Torian was, uh, was, was animating amazing 3D death battles um, on Death Battle and Screw Attack. And I remember I got a chance to kind of meet a couple of the guys there. I got a chance to meet Sam Mitchell, who I know he's listening to this. Sam's a man. Uh, Sean he's Hines, making the Austin, thumbnail live right uh, now. Harvard. That's how he does it. <laughs> and we so I met a lot live cam. And so I met a lot of people, and, and the thing I noticed with Torian, he's going to get mad at me, but I was like, bro, your, your sound effects are, are straight. How the French say, le garbage. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're not good. So I was like, dude, let me do it for you. Let me, let me send you what I got here, what I got. And then I think the first thing that I sent him was actually, he did a death battle. I think it was, it was Yang versus Tifa, if I'm not mistaken. And so mm -hmm. I did a little demo, threw some sound design in it, and then sent it his way. And then that kind of got the ball rolling in terms of, of you know, being able to show that I had a service to provide. So I got a chance to meet Tori, got a chance to meet the team, got Noel, in my way to Sound there. guy Wiggins. That was it, right? But then at the time, you know, I was also I was also a camera guy, I was also a DP. So mm -hmm. I knew a lot of things. I'm like the the Mario in Mario Kart. Pretty real well rounded. Not the fastest, not mm -hmm. the heaviest. Not the lightest, all that stuff, but just kind of right in the middle. So I was pretty well rounded. So anyway, yeah. uh, Torian is Torian. We all know and love him. He's done amazing death battles and uh, worked on more death battles and more death battles. And now Torian also started to pitch the idea of what would become Red versus Blue Zero. And then, as soon as he got that thing all ready to go, came to me and was like, "Hey, Noel." And then I said, "I'll do it." And then he said, <laughs> "He didn't even offer." I didn't explain yes. <laughs> anything yet, and I was like, "Don't matter." I'll do it. And he's like, would you want to write for Red vs. Blue Zero? And I was like, oh, hell yeah, bro. Let's go. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I kind of got lucky. You know, it's all of, mm. it's it's not necessarily about who you know. Sometimes it's who knows you. But mm -hmm. just be ready. You know, be ready to learn. Be ready to work hard. And, and you know, when those when those opportunities happen and you get lucky, you're you're ready to go. So, yeah. Uh, other than that, Red vs. Blue Zero comes out on Mondays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time on the RoosterTeeth.com website. Let's go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite part is that uh, Mike, Mike is going to just put that bottom third, that lower third up. All the time. <laughs> yeah. I'll 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 start swapping uh, swapping in the Ruby ones and well, it'll be a game for like, Mike oh, no. to, like yeah, which one do I pick? Every, whichever ooh, one. Ooh, <laughs> well, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. is out Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central. <laughs> Let's abolish daylight savings time. Um, 
because uh, it's dark out at 550 and it makes me depressed. I hate um, it. That's true. No, I mean, I think uh, talking like, you know, creative stuff, like I, I think you bring up a really good point, too, is that like you and this is something we talked about on the show before, like you got your foot in the door. Yeah. You yeah. you were doing something you enjoyed, but wasn't necessarily maybe the thing you want to do forever. But you use this as an opportunity to get in, to get to know people. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I think that that's super valid. I mean, like, I started out doing machinima and editing and doing some sound design stuff, although it's terrible. Um, I mean, I, you know, none of us here, and it's very rare, like, you don't start where you want to be. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes it, it, I think it's okay if uh, it's better to get a job in the industry in any subject than to not get one, even if it's not yeah. exactly the department you want or, like, the... The specialty you want if that makes sense but then you get to learn you know you get to yeah. learn the, the the different you know positions the different phases of production and like everything to me even if i didn't enjoy doing it everything became a tool that i would just put in the toolbox you know mm -hmm. just just kind of just kind of let it rest in the toolbox there so you know i started out learning audio and it it actually helped me learn and grow as an artist because i was because i started with audio and realized how important it was it started to guide how i started to tell stories mm -hmm. and so i'm i'm a i'm a huge fan of i, I should I should be the one to say this correctly, but it's like diegetic type sounds where it's like sure. you sounds that, that, that happen within the world. Um, but yeah, so like I learned audio, you know, I was also a PA at times. I worked on reality shows being like a, like a, like a cam op and assistant camera, which by the way, absolutely hated those experiences. But again, tools in the toolbox. And, um, yeah. and, and then, you know, like now I get to, I'm lucky enough that I get to write, I get to co-direct with uh, Torian Crawford and Joshua Kazemi. If you're not following those dudes on Twitter, you're wrong. So please follow them. They're amazing, talented individuals. And then, you know, now I'm learning how to produce as well. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing half the time uh, as a producer, but hey, you know, tools in the toolbox. It is. <laughs> in the toolbox. I mean, every, you know, every step you've taken along the path is one more thing where, you, you know, when, when something comes up involving sound design, Oh, you know, you at least you at least can, uh, can begin to uh, approach it, right? Exactly. You know, we can communicate. like we can communicate. you're gonna we can collaborate. we're gonna leave that up to the experts, but you have an idea. Yeah. You know, and uh, and and that's I think super helpful, especially if anybody who wants to do something in like a more like lead directorial producer role is like mm -hmm. you do kind of have to be a generalist. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yep. Um, there's kind of no way around that. And my favorite thing to do is because I know specific, you know, uh, jargon and terms, mm -hmm. I love to go to those experts and then use them incorrectly. Oh, um, I, do that I love to go to Alina. I love to go to Chris. I love to yeah. go to Philip, especially regarding sound. And yeah. I just love to use these terms just ex inter interchangeably. It doesn't make any sense. It's absolutely wrong. But I love, I love to do it. I love to Noelle. see the reaction. Noel, the next time you're doing something in, with, with mix or something like that, I just need you to ask Chris or Philip, like, just be like, "Hey, do you think we should uh we should crystallize that altar boy? We should just crystallize, crystallize it, normalize it. You know, just go ahead and do all yeah, that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Just just bring that up. Can we crunch that audio? Can we make it sound distorted? Can we do that, please? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think would be better here? A uh, uh, a low pass or a. You know, I, I, I'm just, I'm not sure. Uh, Minus what do you three. Think? Who wants that? We need to be at zero. We need to be above zero, actually. Yeah. I know they're loving this. I don't know if I'm feeling the LFE. <laughs> the LFE. <laughs> let's get that equalizer. Uh, let's go ahead and throw that into a... I'm not even the into gate on it. You guys are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's suppress the noise right there. Let's let, let's, let's de-click that right there. Oh, I love doing that. I love oh, yeah. doing it. <laughs> you guys are the worst. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What I what I love to do though is I as I love to tell them like certain inspirations. So I'll be like, yo, can you make that sound more like a more like the Iron Giant or more like a you know that that Cave of Wonders from Aladdin? You know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you make that happen? Can you make, the Diamond in the Rough? Can you make that happen? I love that. I usually so just like, say things oh. like uh, wetter, um, <laughs> wetter or drier. Dr um, can we make that wetter by like eighty percent, please? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, can we can we crank the dry dial uh, down to hundred percent? Dry dial. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, um, let's uh, let's do another question <laughs> so that we can get away from <laughs> so this. Sorry. Um, let's do. Uh, or Asa, Asa, do you have one that you would like to to start a conversation about uh, <laughs> or with or f from? Um, Choi Sugoi has 
a question that that's a good one that's a good i've one. been very interested in what is the average amount of oh, energy God. drinks or cups of coffee slash tea consumed during a production but also what kind of struggles have we had trying to communicate um uh or work from home or maybe like during work from home if there's troubles in communication there oof oof aaron how many oh there's one carry I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I, I try not to do uh, energy drinks. I'm really bad about them, like as in I can't handle them. I, I don't think my liver can handle them. Example, I one time I, I, I had a five-hour energy, and I was like, yo, I got another five-hour energy. Oh, clearly, no. clearly, if, if my math is correct, <laughs> that yes. means 10 hours. I drank both of them, literally just down them. Within one hour, I fell asleep. So I think I kind of mm -hmm. went past it and then <laughs> oh, went to zero. Goodness. So well, your I body has from, uh, uh, measures in it to stop you from time traveling. Oh, uh, I've told this story before, but one time uh, during RVP 10 uh, and things were not going well, uh, I may have taken a five hour energy shot and thought, oh, this will wake me up. I hope I'm not getting sick, though, from lack of sleep. Let me pour an uh, emergency packet in this. Oh, oh no. Oh. And uh, innovative, uh, innovative, innovative. I do appreciate it. It saved time. Uh, <laughs> I do think that it. Uh, I think that's why I have acid reflux now. Um, oh. But I, uh, uh, oh caffeine is important. Drink water. That's more sure. important. Sometimes Drink. we'll wake you up okay. even more. So you have to be drinking water all day long. Uh, I personally, um, don't gotta get this food on too. Um, I also take uh, ADHD medication. So I try not to drink caffeine in the morning um, cause that already is like enough. But usually like at lunch I'll have like like tea or soda or something and then like at like two or three i'll have like an energy drink to kind of just like get me through the end of the day um that's been my my normal lately it used I, to be a lot worse uh before i get to ask you Aaron, because i miss always seeing you make tea <laughs> and or coffee in the kitchen i wanted I to point out that caesar in chat kaiser geyser goes red bull tastes like swampy witch ass but like thanos it is inevitable <laughs> red, red, red Bull to me tastes like. Does anyone remember Mr. Bubble? No. As, as, as okay, so what as a kid, fuck? if you wanted, as a kid, if you wanted to take a bubble bath, you had Mr. Bubble. Oh I'm showing yeah. Showing my age right now, by the way. But I used to accidentally drink it what? Uh, all the time, and so uh, to me, one red time Bull, Noel makes no, sense. Many, yeah, but many times it's, it's it's inevitable. You know, you're you're you're, <laughs> no! you're playing the bubbles, you're having fun, your mouth is open sometimes. <laughs> and you know, you drink <laughs> you know, out of the bottle, you know, just but to me Red Bull tastes like what I remember Mr. Bubble tasted like. So I, just just throwing that out there. Just just a little tidbit, little little factoid right there. Speaking That's I mean speaking of RVB, Red Bull tastes like ass. It's an old <laughs> joke. I I hate normal Red Bull. I've grown to really love sugar-free Red Bull. Mmm. Controversial. I know. <laughs> Lisa, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, Aaron, Aaron, what uh, is your caffeine oh. intake like? Oof. Uh, I'll usually have two to three cups of coffee a day before 5 p.m. After 5 p.m., I try to Whoa. stop. Smart. And uh, we've been in quarantine working from home for like eight months now. So <laughs> Don't say uh, it out loud. However many days that is. <laughs> What's the in between? The What's your in between like from one cup to the other? Like how much time goes by? Uh I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like really craving like the coffee taste. It's not even the caffeine. I think it's just like oh, the taste of the, the coffee and the sugar. Yeah. I know mm. mm. sensation. So a... sometimes sometimes it'll be like one after the other. Sometimes I'll be like, mm, this is this is a bit too much. Maybe I'll slow down a bit and I'll go for like an hour. You gotta go fast. You gotta go yeah. fast. Yeah. yeah. It, it is so. a very deep flavor coffee. it is rich what's your favorite type of coffee i know nothing about coffee and neither do i i'll just drink whatever <laughs> i have <laughs> is it the, the if i have milk it's sugar like that's all i need uh, the the huntress roast coffee that we have oh nice mm. good one i don't remember honestly that whatever we have at the office i've long forgotten about it that's I like know. in the stone age i don't <laughs> what animation office to me, all coffee is Folgers to me. That's really it. Like, it's but it's just because Folgers, the, the brand oh, like Folgers. Oh, the, the basic tier. That's the, the, the best part of waking my, up. Okay. It's Folgers in your cup. So, you know, that, that's pretty much it. I, look, I started drinking coffee, and then um, 
uh, it was like a year after I started going out with my SO, and um, my SO is kind of like, to put it, it's, we're coffee snobs now. Um, oh, no. We only ever drink like medium roast. We don't have, we haven't gotten to light roast yet, but medium uh, roast yeah. uh, arguably has more caffeine than dark. Uh, mm-hmm. But there's that, it's like that taste, that flavor profile. Um, yeah. There's this one okay. time that I had a, we had a, um, uh, we were over a friend's house and we asked, we were like, oh, we really need a caffeine kick. And so our friend made coffee and they made Folgers. <laughs> And mm, we were like, delicious. oh, this is interesting. And we tried it and we looked at each other because we were both like, oh, this is actually really good. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying like you spit it in their face. No, it was, we were legitimately like, that's really Poured complex. the hot coffee on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> Would you try that one coffee? Uh, it's like super expensive. It's like. Is it poop? Is it's it the like, one that gets pooped out. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, it's yeah. like elephant poop, right? No, we never uh, want to try it. Mm, okay. What? Well, <laughs> okay. okay. Why? Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> interested and horrified, I guess, are close on a slider, but no. It's supposed to be the digestive tract breaks it down and yada, yada, yada. Then when you poop it out and you let it dry and then you roast it, it's supposed, supposed to be delish. Uh, the, we need that emoji again. I'll leave it as, right su- as supposed to be. It's like, <laughs> so, I feel like that's supposedly. like when rich people try to make like stuff that you shouldn't be eating. Mm. Like, Oh, oh like yeah. A delicacy, mm-hmm. like, you know, escargot or yeah. caviar. I, I only eat poopy coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just like, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't sound good. Ooh. Um, I do want to mention that if you guys haven't noticed, we're over 200000 for Extra Life. Thank you to Juan, Woo! who uh, donated. Oh, this is really cute. Juan donated 2000 with the message, go watch Recorded by RSL. Aww. <laughs> Thank you, Ooh. guys. Watch <laughs> That's amazing. Holy crap. Yes. And also, go watch it for the kids. you watch. should go watch Recorded by Arizal. Especially, mm-hmm. look, now you've got, look, I mean, I don't even think you, need, you don't need a first membership to do it, but you've got your first membership now because you're definitely watching uh, uh, Ruby at 10 a.m. every Saturday and then uh, <laughs> RVB at 10, a, at 10 a.m. every Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got all this content. Um, content. And Issa, uh, speaking of the, the time <laughs> that we're at, is, is there maybe like a good place that people could watch all that content now? A good place, roosterteeth.com has a new app for Ooh. living rooms. <laughs> Yay! Living room. I have living a room app. Nice. So, uh, I just got a living room. Look through my list. You got Roku, Xbox, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV. You can now watch Rooster Teeth on an app. Uh, it's live and it's available. And, yeah. And you can go do that. <laughs> Yeah, it's easier and easier to watch our stuff. You've got all of those. You can like uh, Chromecast the app. Like it's we're we're trying to make it easy. Um, yes. But yeah, um, and even if you even if you have a living room, you can still use that living room app in like other rooms. So it's, you can yeah. use it wherever you want. Bedroom. You're mine. It's the, true. The, it's <laughs> big. The police will not break down the doors if it you turn not. on the living room app in the bedroom. It's okay. <laughs> I um I did want to get to that second half of the question as well that um, yeah choice ago I asked which was kind I forgot of what it was uh, uh if there's any working from home has there been any kind of breakdowns in um let me bring it up because I'm paraphrasing <laughs> Commun- and I, yeah, I think I'm really wrong from home what kind of struggles did you guys have when trying to communicate or like working from home mm. uh, when it comes to production hmm hmm I've I've got one if, if Go people are it. still thinking um. I, the I think the the recent one that I've kind of like because it's been this like constant like have another month go by and then like look back and be like what is working what is not working mm-hmm. um, the thing I think the thing like I miss the most or, or like that is we're having to find a new way to do things is like those five minute conversations you have with people yeah you know like it used to be so easy to just be like I need to talk to you about something uh, let me just like go buy a dash real quick and yeah. we can't do that anymore now it's like we have to schedule everything like because we need to be able to like you know people are in more meetings now yeah um and it's just it's a lot harder to just be like i just need to talk to this person real quick everything turns into a bigger deal because it's not worth 30 minutes Mm. so yeah i don't that that, that's been that i think that's been the new hardest part is just Mm -hmm. like how to how to keep in touch without making it a huge deal yeah Mm. kind of going off of that like 
just the fact that we used to be in all in the same room, either like doing a review or looking over like footage or whatever. And like, if there's ever a like piece of feedback or like a critique that comes up, um, we don't really get the read of the room anymore, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Like, yeah. it's hard to know what other people are thinking. Mm-hmm. Like, is this good? Is it bad? Like, what can we, like, that's just not there. Yeah. Even though some, like, most of us will have webcams on. Right. But it's not quite the same. I don't yeah. know how to explain it, really. <laughs> it, it's I, not the same, yeah. I would uh, piggyback off of that because there has been or not it has been, but I, I've been thinking about this a lot, about, like, the idea of text literacy, because mm. it's, there is that distinct uh, distinction where, um, you know, there's been these studies that majority of women feel like they have to uh, sound more appealing uh, oh, through yeah. text, yep. right? It's mm. always exclamation points, or, like, this kind of passive tone, That's or use emojis. Yep, we all know it. <laughs> <laughs> and that way you sound friendlier. And so... Yeah. Even when working in-house with contractors, I think um, we've come across a lot of different people who are not exactly like uh, emotionally intelligent when it comes to uh, portraying themselves online just through text, because mm-hmm. right. it's harder to read like the subtext. You you think about you have to think about what you're typing out and then send it out. So therefore, like that's it. You know, you can't yeah. just say something off the cuff and uh, mm-hmm. in person and just be like oh haha you like you you understand this um mutual like idea of sarcasm whereas if right. you do it online you have to be like you'd have to type 90 words per minute just so you can really say haha jk like really fast afterwards you know? <laughs> um yeah or so i mean like if you if you say something to somebody in person and like you can tell by their expression that like oh wait no i said that poorly wait wait sorry let me clarify yes. you can't do that now you just have to wait while it says they're typing for five minutes and sweat <laughs> It's like, what, oh, sh- I should have put an emoji on. What did I say? <laughs> the thing that I, the thing that I find that I've learned is I have a new uh, pet peeve, and it's like when someone is asking me a question through our messaging app, they'll, they'll res- their first uh, uh, message will be, "Hey, I got a question." Oh, and no, then, and then, say. and then, like, and then I just sit there in anticipation, just waiting, watching the little bow. And I'm just like, yo, what's the question, fam? Like, come on now. Come yeah. on. 40 seconds then went by. What is, please tell me, what is it? Uh, it's even and, more frustrating when it's like a really long span of time. And when you finally get the message, it's just like one or two words. That's it. It's yeah. like, <laughs> it's, so, yeah, so like I I will say though the maybe the thing that I find as a pro uh, in this situation it, it, actually it's probably not but I'll, I'll say it like it is with confidence. I'll yeah, say it's a pro. I'll say it. I'll say it's it. a pro if you make it a pro. I I have uh, I have realized that I multitask so often that I oh, yeah. probably shouldn't be doing it in the meetings, but I I'm I'm, I'm doing a bunch of things at the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the thing yeah. is, I do it so well now that when whenever that time comes when we go back in the office. I don't know how I'm gonna do that anymore. <laughs> I'm so worried about it. But uh, but yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if I'm in a meeting on my laptop and like typing while I'm listening, I can do that, but it looks super rude. Super um, rude. But <laughs> but home. now I just turn off my camera. I'm like, I just didn't feel like it today. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Big mood. It's That's gonna be interesting to adjust, but I also really miss it. So yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I miss I miss Good everybody. Question miss everybody let's Ooh, was a good question. let's go to another question yeah let's I'm, do it i'm scrolling back up to our list yeah you, you. um carry pick yeah carry pick. i can do one i can do one this uh this will be be fun uh i think for a bunch of us uh let's see the one from mavacor 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 um how much creativity do you have in animation when translating a script to visuals Ooh. um mm. pretty it, pretty broad question i think we could all tackle in like different ways um I no i mean wanna... w- what's it like you know being a co-writer and a co-director and you know also working with a director like how Ooh, yeah. how, how has that been um it's it's actually been give us the juice a... oh 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 here's the juice here's the juice baby. juice us it's, it's been it's it's actually been really really fun and really inspiring because 
you know, uh, Torian is all about the collaboration. So for one, I, I, I would say the first thing I'll answer is for me being a co-director as well as a co-writer, I know that it's, it's also my job to help Torian achieve his vision. And Torian has a very mm. clear vision. Now, now, mind you, even though he has a very clear vision, super open for collaboration. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that starts to, uh, you know, span across the entire team. So uh, how much control do I get regarding like from script to visuals? I, if, to, to answer that question, I get control, but you know, like with that collaboration, so like perfect example, right? So I'll, I'll just give you like a real world example. Uh, uh, Peter Dang, Joe Vick, Torian Crawford are probably some of the most amazing uh, like animators that I've had a chance to work with, especially when it comes yeah. to like the fight choreography. Mm -hmm. um, they've been tackling a majority of, of the of the action sequences in Red vs. Blue Zero. That comes out on Mondays at 10 a.m. Central Standard <laughs> Time on the RoosterTeeth.com website. Let's go. Um, but, um, you know, for me, oh, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> Red vs. Blue Zero out now. New episodes Monday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Exclamation point. Um, and sometimes I'll, I want to give them the space to be creative, to do what they do so well. And it, regarding animation, sometimes I'll write things cause like I'll, I'll say, oh, this happens and then this happens and then this kick happens and then they go up here and da 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 da. But sometimes I try to keep it a little loose so mm -hmm. that w when I see it and I see what they're kicking out, oh, I'm just blown away. And then it makes me feel like I'm a God. Cause I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I, I help that by literally writing uh, one agent one fights. And then out of that, out of that, this amazing tapestry of, of choreography comes out and I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm so good at this. Yeah. But, 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 but yeah, like when it comes to that control, we're, we're always about trying to let, uh, hand that control to other people so that, you know, everyone can kind of chip in, uh, throw in a little bit of themselves into it. And, and really, you know, I trust them to be the professionals that they are. And the reality is we all are, and we all just help each other go up this ladder of amazingness. And so, you know, I guess super long winded answer, you know, you get control, but you definitely want to allow other people to have th their piece of the pie, so to speak. So, mm -hmm. um, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> I, think, I mean, what, yeah, I think, I think so. Absolutely. I, I got me hyped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, hyped. Yes, please. I Aaron, want to, oh, yeah, go ahead, Issa, Aaron go ahead. from Aaron from a uh, care, you me, same brain. Uh, from okay. an art director oh, point spring. of view, um, how do you end up translating uh, from the script to um, character design or uh, giving any notes? Uh, after? <laughs> oh, I was looking the wrong way. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Perfect. <laughs> Solid. That's great. Um, yeah. What is that process like for you? For, uh, do you end up reading scripts first, or even then, is there something oh, yeah. in the scripts that you always have to like uh, remember <laughs> whenever yeah. you're yeah, designing? Yeah. Well, usually, like, pretty much everybody on Groovy is, like, required to read the scripts. Like, True. even if you're not, um, like, an artist or an animator, etc. Like, everybody has to read it. Um, yeah. <laughs> or that's what we like to, anyways. Um, I feel like it makes sense. I don't think that's too much of an ask. <laughs> um, but in terms of, like, adapting what um, is in the scripts for, like, a from a concept perspective, um, usually... I try to like and also don't want to like spoil anything but sure. there's been plenty of times where carrie will be like uh in a kickoff uh where it's like oh i wrote this out in the script but this was just kind of fluff to like bulk up the script um we don't need that exact thing or it can be tweaked slightly etc mm. um so i feel like we'll read the scripts but uh yeah, for concept, we usually go off of what directors are looking for mm. and, like, their immediate feedback. And then uh, we'll double-check the scripts as, like, um, just, like, a backup to make sure there's, like, any other uh, key points that were missed for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah so. like, the, yes, s sometimes something is in the script because it, like, really specifically needs to be that. Yeah. And then sometimes yeah. it's, it needs to represent or do this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's open, like, what it could be. I mean, like, yeah. I... I, I like overall yeah noel everything you're talking about is like what i super i like i like i always like to think of the creative process as like that scene in uh avent children when cloud gets like thrown up oh, to uh so to sephiroth it's like cloud knows where he's gonna go that's so good. right and and maybe he could make it on his own but everybody's gonna help him along the way and add like their their own like cool spin to it and everything mm -hmm. like 
yeah, I, I feel like that's the important thing is like, it, it's, it's, you know, we, we hand over the script and it's like, cool. If everybody just does this, we feel like we'll be okay. But then the storyboard team gets to it and they're like, oh, we could also do this. And then the art mm-hmm. team gets to it. It's like, we could also do this and then lay out an animation and, and effects and audio and music and everybody. It just kind of like all comes together. Yeah. And and then and then when you all like work together for that teamwork, then at the end you get that heiress hand. Oh, yeah. that really that really sends you. She she's coming from the live stream, but she gives you that hand. Oh, oh like God. that's exactly what you want. That's a, and then that's how you beat. It Seth just feels right. <laughs> also, I like how no, I like how you said in like your script for like RVB, it's like and there's a cool fight here. Oh, there's yeah. been so many times, R- Carrie and oh, yeah. Ruby. There's been <laughs> lines that are just like uh yang and ruby to a cool fight here yeah and that, like that's it and then it's like okay well now it, we have to decipher what exactly goes perfect. into that fight sequence it yeah. really it, it really it kind of depends on on the moment it's like i like mm-hmm. there, yeah it's exactly like there'll be times where it's like okay and then there you know especially the, the fights that have like a little bit more like traversal to them it's mm-hmm. like you know and then this thing happens and, and this person jumps off this rock onto this uh and maybe that rock changes to a pillar later or something you know whatever but there'll be other times where it's just like and then these two characters fight for about 20 seconds and it's pretty cool. <laughs> and it's really cool. And, what I'll uh, try to do sometimes to help though is 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 I'll say like, yo, you seen the raid dog? You right. seen that movie? Oh, yeah, yeah, you that part right there? Yeah, a little something like that. A little something yeah. like that. And then, you know, like I'll I'll try to provide direction so that they're not left on their own mm-hmm. and and I'll always answer questions. That's a very important thing. Uh, as a director, you just have answers four questions because there's gonna be a lot of questions that's yes. all and, um, it's constant exactly yeah. and so just give them that direction and then just you know let them do what they do because yeah. they they do it oh so well oh so well yeah isa yes. what, what's what was it like for you kind of like uh, we talked on some of this stuff before but like kind of the difference between like um you know you directing on like camp camp where you had a, a script that you weren't like involved with directly versus like recorded by arzal where you kind of were seeing it from start to finish you know like did, did you did you find that you had more changes? I'm curious. Like, did you find that you had more changes from script to screen on stuff that you wrote or stuff that you didn't write? It's stuff that I didn't write. I would say didn't write. That's yeah, I had more changes, and part of that is I think um, how uh, camp camp. Uh, I'm specifically an episode director, so like mm-hmm. as Noel said, I'm ultimately serving a another higher person in this in camp camp's case jordan swears shout out um and then recorded by rsl it is uh i think therein lies like that magic spot of like oh if i could ask for something this is where i would do it the way that i approach being creative from script to animation though is i end up thinking about more more about like oh well what are my limitations and then trying to work from there Mm -hmm. um so, because part of it too, as a showrunner and/or director, is you have to work with production, and what that means is, I mean, Noel's a producer now, so what that means is mm-hmm. also like, there's scheduling involved, there's um, other things like money involved, like how many, how what's how <laughs> many days, <laughs> how many it's days do you have <laughs> a specific artist to work yeah. on something, and so. Uh, and having the director say, I know you said three days, but what about yes. four? Yes. And it's <laughs> funny because I've definitely become that person now. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'm just like, well, how about it's uh, so fun fact. Um, I was on the Dead Little Rooster set and that was kind of one of the first times I saw an, the, the real relationship between a producer and the creative or uh, yeah producer and creative on set where the producer at the time has been like oh hey how about we do this to, as a shortcut and the director and everyone else on the team who's more on the creative side they're like no we can't because the vision is this and it's so <laughs> fascinating mm-hmm. it was it what a what a what a relationship <laughs> that interpersonal it's important. communication is yes. interesting yeah. i think that happens in every production honestly <laughs> yes you're not wrong I think um, live action is, it was so much more hectic because we, we had to do everything in a day. Um, right. Whereas animation, it's kind of this drawn out like battle. <laughs> a marathon. A marathon, yes, exactly. It, it um, definitely is, yeah. Which it's like, it's nice, like doing live action stuff is nice because it's like, it really is like, all right, well in 12 hours from now, we're done. Mm-hmm. Let's just, I hope we get it all. 
Um, <laughs> but you know, in 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 animation, is a little bit more like, well, this could this could also go in tomorrow, and, and that would be okay. Um, oh, if we can make it work, I'm, pay, I'm paying my phone. <laughs> Something I've I've also learned because I've I've been lucky enough to to be the DP of R2 Shorts and work with the amazing people in in Core, and then coming to animation, I've learned the the like intricacies of both worlds so like mm -hmm. example in live action there's a lot of like oh yeah just just let it roll we'll just keep recording just let the scene breathe and then you know whenever you get to the edit you can kind of massage it use a little bit of that like Ooh, headroom yeah. or whatever yeah. just to kind of get that edit right but when it comes to animation <laughs> i'm just like hey man can you like um would you mind like animating like you know like maybe like a thousand more frames? No, okay, oh okay, wait, 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 you're throwing things, you're throwing things. Don't, no, 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 I'm sorry, I, the, I'll, I'll never ask again. The 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 number of times I have said, "Hey, can I get six more frames at the beginning of that shot or at the end of that shot?" has become a joke. <laughs> I I put on a clown nose now to say see, it because see, but you asked for a six, I'm asking for a thousand. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm I mean, so you know, wrong. I'm so wrong. If it's an environment shot, so I mean, funny. you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you it, know, I it's see just it. it's just like sometimes it's like, eh, just give me six, you know, <laughs> it's a clean six. <laughs> clean I don't know. It it helps. It helps. Yeah, I don't know. That's a uh, that's all super interesting. Yeah, I I feel like the the important takeaway is collaboration mm -hmm. and compromise. Yes, Ooh. the two C's. Yes. Camp, but, camp. Yes. <laughs> Thanks camp. for laughing, Aaron. <laughs> do y'all wanna do y'all wanna squeeze in one more question? Let's do one more. Cause yeah. I have to go to the bathroom so badly. Oh, you don't even oh, know. Sorry. Um, oh, can I choose this one? Please. Yes. I like this one from Tyrant2025. <gasps> um, what are some of the challenges with bringing in new viewers to a show after it's been airing for so long? Um, I particularly like this because, uh, like, Noelle, you, you, are, you and RVB, the RVB yes. team, are specifically doing the season for that reason and that that's why it's a new season whereas like mm -hmm. carrie this is <laughs> ruby <laughs> what's the number eight our eight yeah. year old eight. our eight yeah. year old child and child. so yes <laughs> there there are definitely some um uh some different answers for this one i just realized yeah, something yeah. what i started working on rvb season eight <gasps> Ooh. Wow. and now we're making ruby eight Hang on, I'm going to wow. need a minute. Noel, you should talk. About it. <laughs> yeah, Noel, make, a wish, first, make a wish. Make a wish. Make a wish. Okay. So um, the question again is, wh what are the challenges? Is that what the question is? Yeah, bringing um, in new viewers. Yeah, okay. So I'll be honest, still learning that answer right now mm -hmm. as we speak. But the challenges that we know we are going to face is, you know, you have Red versus Blue. It's a legacy show. Mm. The show has been around for so long. We're on season pretty much 18 at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I remember watching Red versus Blue when I was in high school, uh, literally when it started. Again, that's mm -hmm. how I'm dating myself at this or aging myself at this point. I'm not dating myself, um, but it's okay. You can date yourself. Yeah, um, totally okay. But, <laughs> but, you know, so it's built up a lot of like there, there is a hardcore fan base. And, and the first thing that we want to do is we want to respect that fan base i want to respect that fan base mm. and but at the same time you know we also want to do something a bit different so yeah we can find a, a new audience so it's this balance of trying to you know uh um try something brand new that that's going to you know be controversial to to a, a lot of the uh og fans mm. and but at the same time trying to respect the uh them as well and that community because again am amazing community mm -hmm. and so you know these are the challenges that we have and so i guess to answer that question like so that is those are the challenges now how we're trying to approach it is the first thing we're trying to do is just throw that word respect in there mm -hmm. you know we want we want to like if i could be super super open i would say you know like when it comes to like this first episode you know, we, it's out, so I can talk about it, right? Yeah, <laughs> first yeah, members. Yeah, 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 first, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, please be a first member. Please be, uh, and be an Asian one. Be, be a first member. Yeah. And, you know, we, we throw in this new team. We have uh, some, some older, uh, uh, more recognizable um, members showing up. And, you know, we want to kind of create this story that, that kind of brings some things together while exploring new stuff. So I, I guess, yeah, again, really just to kind of 
not like beat around the bush. We definitely want to respect the the RVB community, and and that is something that we're always thinking about. Um, but we're also trying to tell like a brand new story, and we're really we're really hoping that that community is going to be open to that. Mm. Um, you know, it honestly it may not be your jam, but please just give it a shot. Let us know how you feel. It doesn't you know, take away uh, what's already there. Yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the I can certainly guarantee you that we have we have paid attention. We have uh, worked hard. We're, we're putting a lot uh, a, all that everyone in the team has put so much of themselves into this show because we care about it that much mm -hmm. and we respect it that much. So hopefully you'll give us a shot. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. Uh, you know, you're going to see some new faces, some old faces. We're going to have a blast. 10 a.m. Monday. I know it. On the roosterteam.com. I, I, I was building up. I slowed down my pacing a little bit. <laughs> I was like, got it, got it. Well, Red and versus it's, blue, it, zero. Out now. Uh, uh, I know we're, we're getting short on time here, so my uh, quick answer for Ruby is uh, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Oh Central God. on roosterteeth.com. <laughs> Uh, volume eight is out now. I mean, it, it's eight. It's it's the eighth volume. Uh, if anybody if anybody has an answer to this question, I'd love to hear it. Um, tell your friends. <laughs> That's my answer. Hey, I mean, begging. I mean, go ahead, Aaron. Oh, I've definitely seen like just uh, me being nosy and perusing the mm. Ruby subreddit. I'll it. see so many comments that are like, "Oh, I haven't watched Ruby since volume three. Should I pick it up again?" Yes. I feel like, honestly, word of mouth, like, from mm -hmm. diehard mm -hmm. fans really helps mm -hmm. get either old viewers back into it or, like, new viewers. And yeah. I think, like, raising the bar or, like, raising the stakes every season, mm -hmm. like, uh, adds, like, a lot of intrigue. I mean, I'll be honest, yeah, I, I only watch things if I have friends that are telling me, like, yeah, it's worth it. But, yeah, it's true. true. There you go. It's true. So if you think that Ruby Volume 8 and RB Zero is worth it, which, of course, you do, uh, yeah. if you wanted to tell some of your friends and recorded by ours all. Um, also, <laughs> just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> Which, by the way, I went a little long because I didn't know that we were getting close to time. Oh, you're fine. I apologize. I want, I'd rather I don't know hear... what I'm doing half the time. <laughs> I, did, no, I, I made a bit guest. out of it because I don't know how to answer it, so I'm glad that you did. <laughs> yeah, you know. I, I like that answer. It's about respect. Yeah. But, you know, that, that, and it's like, you know, we, the last thing I'll say with, with Red vs. Blue is we wanted to bring that same energy that that like our predecessors got a chance to so like bernie and matt we wanted to bring that same vibe of like you know we're we're a group of friends that just want to make some some really cool can i say can i cuss i, I won't can. cuss i was i, I can of course cool. you fucking shit, can yeah cool dope <laughs> yeah we just want to make some really cool fun shit and we really think you're gonna have a good time. So just rock with us for a little bit. Rock with us for a little I, bit, uh, especially at 10 a.m. on Monday. Oh my god! <laughs> on TheRooster2.com. <laughs> There's a uh, a lot of uh, early early Ruby vibes in all the stories you're telling. So I uh, yeah. Hmm. I think also just helping or um to help with like getting new viewers into RVB. Like this is like a whole or nearly like standalone story. Like it's you don't have to watch the previous 17 years that is correct of content. that is correct yeah. that is correct. like you'll see like a few cameos like yeah a few you few could faces. and you yeah. should yeah but you don't you should, have yeah. to exactly the reading's not, not required, required. not yes. required yeah. yes if you've always thought man what's this all what's this red versus blue thing all about let's just start at zero. Ooh, that's a good Ooh, Got make a shirt monday is tagline <laughs> Well, is that the end of the show? I think it is. I, I don't so. know. I don't. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Carrie and Noel. I miss. Thank you, you for having me. Thank you so Thanks much for, for joining us. Thank you for having. Thank you, chat, for joining us too. This is our first Thank live you, one. Chat. Yes. Uh, let us this know was live. Oh, what we can do. Wow. Better. Let us know um, what else we could do. Uh, we have a lot more questions too. We can always answer more questions if you guys have. And we will. For us, and we will. Uh, this will be up. Uh, we're still a podcast, aren't we, guys? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it should still be so, Thursdays and Friday and all that. This will be up, yeah. Um, so if you or your friends have missed this one, uh, keep in touch. We will yeah. we will appear again. Um, 
make sure you guys watch Red vs. Blue no matter how many yes. times. What time? Monday, what time? Monday, 10, 10 a.m. on the RoosterTeeth.com. Be a first member. Be an agent one. And tell this, a friend to tell a friend. Let's go. This is not the last time we'll see Noel, and we will still be seeing uh, other RVB people here as well. Also, yeah. Ruby Volume 8 is out. When are we going to do that? Saturday, 10 a.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. Clear your schedules, uh, 10 a.m. <laughs> tell your friends. Tell your tell friends. Your parents. Tell your friends or else. Tell your pets. <laughs> or else. Um, and uh, coming up after us, uh, Extra Life recaps. Uh, yeah. Remember, Extra Life is Thanks happening. for your donations. Thank you for your donations. <laughs> and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.